touch up play. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Great honor. I just saw a poll that we're actually leading with Hispanics. That's never happened before. And I don't know, but I don't know, but it's going to be close. I mean, she's sleeping right now. She couldn't go on the trail. You know, you think when you have 14 days left, you wouldn't be sleeping. She's not doing anything today. I should take one of that. I've, we've gone 52 days in a row, and I'm going 14 more days, and we're going to have a big victory party, hopefully, and we're going to turn our country around. We're going to make it great again, as I say. We're going to make America great again, but we are uh, joined by a lot of fantastic people, a lot of great political people, and uh, it really is an honor to have you at Doral, especially. This has been a very special place for me. It's been a, been a great, great uh, success. I want to thank all of the representatives from the Doral area because uh, the mayor and everybody. Uh, where's Christy? Is she around? Let's see. Right Christy? Christy? Oh, Christy. <laughs> Christy. Oh, my Christy. Boy, oh, boy. Hi, Christy. Hi, sweetie. You've been so great. We've been so great, and we worked together for a long time, right? Although she's so young, it's not that long. I can't be that long. But it is 13 years. Wow. Since you bought the resort? That's pretty good, yeah, since I bought it. And you've been great. Thank you very much for everything. And uh, we're going to just say a few words. We're going to talk about what's happening with the election. We'll take some questions from the fake news. And, <laughs> and we, will, uh, we will get on with it. We have a, a great panel today, and I appreciate it. We have some real religious leaders. They're the most powerful ones on the panel by far. Right? Right, Chrissy? They're the most powerful. And uh, look at that gentleman. That, that's the biggest church I've ever seen in my life, right? When we need overflow, we use your church, and we get great people in that church, and, I pre and you are fantastic. So I want to thank uh, all of the people that have been supporting us for so long and so strongly. We're doing very well. Uh, the polls are looking great, and I think maybe more important than even the polls are the initial numbers are looking incredible. You know, in North Carolina, I was there, I did three stops there actually yesterday and uh, and one uh, quite a way right after uh, this horrible event happened. But in North Carolina, we have uh, uh, just uh, an amazing result going on because we were expected to maybe have 50% of the vote or 30%. Nobody knew what was going to happen. That place was, I mean, the people were wiped out. And in some of the worst hit sections, they had more people voting than they had in 2016 or in 2020. Can you believe it? Wow. Nobody expected that. They thought if we got 50 percent, I mean, you have to see the homes were just absolutely leveled, floated away, many of them. And there was death. There was death. And FEMA's responded not well. The White House has done a very poor job. They should be ashamed of themselves, actually. But uh, the people kicked in. Franklin Graham's been fantastic. And uh, we've raised a lot of money. We've raised a lot of money for the uh, for the area, a lot of money, over eight million dollars, uh, with uh, given and we've given out to various people that we know do a good job. I met some people there yesterday; they were incredible. A couple of them said the nicest things. I think the nicest, the most beautiful things I've ever had said about me. I thought I heard everything. I've heard everything, good and bad, and they said they said the most beautiful things. So. <clears throat> So I just want to thank them. The, the words were so beautiful. So uh, Doral Mayor Christy Fraga, and thank you very much. And Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, wherever Francis is, he, and I just heard. And Fra I just saw him on television. He was on Fox, and he was saying the best things about me. And thank you for everything and the endorsement and all. Thanks a lot, Francis. You're doing a great job, too, both of you. Everybody should have mayors like this. We see some mayors. We see a lot of mayors that aren't quite as good, I will tell you. And some that aren't good at all. Uh, the mayor of Hialeah, Esteban Bobo. And you know why I love you is because he named their main street after Trump. 
Going right into Hialeah, going into the track. It's Trump. So many people call me. They say, thank you, man. They say, I just saw the most beautiful street. It's got your name on it. And that's sort of one of the first. And uh, I really appreciate it, Mayor. You've been great. Members of Congress, Maria, Elvira, Salazar, thank you. Thank you, Maria, very much. And a friend of mine for a long time, Carlos Jimenez. He's been a friend of mine for a long time. Where is he? And you were also great today, Carlos. I watched you. You got up and you let him have it. You said how bad, how bad she is, how good I am. And I said, that's my Carlos. And she is bad. Look, we don't need, we don't need bad people. We had four years of bad, and we're not going to have four more years. The country can't survive it. It is amazing. Think of it. I said, where is she campaigning today, sir? She's got a day off. You got 14 days left for the presidency, and she's taking a day off. This is not what you want. This is not what you want. Uh, Matt, say hello, Matt, my friend for a long time, huh? A man who uh, has been incredible. Uh, he owns Goya, Goya Foods. I, I, I eat it whenever I can. <laughs> So Bob, and everyone knows him, but I think you're probably the most well-known. You know, they attacked Bob. He announced that he's uh, in favor of Trump. And, you know, the radical left lunatics went crazy. They just went crazy. And they do things that probably are illegal. Probably. I think it's actually illegal. They'll go after companies. They'll go after viciously. They'll, go after, they'll never go after your oil company. But they'll go after <laughs> You wouldn't stand for it either. But Bob did something that was amazing. He said, you know, some people fold because they're weak and uh, they make a mistake in folding because once you fold, then they go after you again and again. But Bob did it different with Goya. He was very proud of it. And he went out there and he said, that's right. We love Trump. We love everything that they're, look, they like our policies, number one. He likes our policies. Then he got to like me. But he went, and everybody thought, oh, this would be bad for his business. And his business doubled, and then tripled, and then, right? I made him a lot of money. Because we have, we have tremendous support. And uh, you've been just a great friend for a long time now, right? For a long time. He took some heat at the beginning, but he handled it really incredibly. And when I have, whenever I see your food, as opposed to some, I, de- I eat it. It's actually quite good out of the can. <laughs> We do actually travel with cans. You know, people don't know that. We do travel with cans. Anyway, I want to thank you very much. Mario Rodriguez. Mario. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Do you want to say something, Mario? Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, Mr. President, it's amazing what you've done for the Hispanic community, and you are going to be rewarded handsomely for that. Thank you. Well, we have. And- They've rewarded me already. You know, it, it actually, this love affair has been going on pretty much from the beginning. Now, 2016, it was a little early, but then I started producing for them, and, and they produce for the country because the, the level of, uh, of genius, entrepreneurship, uh, energy that they have, it's an incredible community. And I liked them, and they liked me, and now they're seeing numbers that are shocking. They're seeing numbers. <laughs> I saw it this morning. The anchor was almost crying. They said, what's going on over here? Uh, it's been a great relationship. Thanks a lot, Mario. Mercedes Schlapp, thank you, Mercedes, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mercedes. And a man who's really, uh, he's got it, Pastor Ramiro Pena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Eduardo, thank you very much for being here. Big movie star from Mexico. He's done a great movie. We watched it together. Freedom, and really great. And you're doing another one very soon, I think, on a similar subject. Right? That's a very sad subject, but that really did create awareness for a very, uh, very tough situation. So we appreciate it very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Uh, Rick Scott's around someplace. Where's Rick? Hello, Rick. Hi, Rick. I just saw a poll. I saw two things. I saw a very nasty commercial about you, and it was false. It was, I was going to call you, and I said, maybe he's going to be there. Nasty but false commercial. So, such a lie. But don't worry, I have a lot of them about me. 
and, and it, has, it hasn't affected us. But uh, Rick is fantastic. He was a great governor, and he's a great senator. He's a great senator. And, and the good news is I saw a poll, and you're really doing great. So you're doing really fantastic, Rick. But uh, just keep it going. So this election is a choice between whether we will have four more years of total failure, because what's going on now, we are, we are a nation in decline. We're a failing nation. We're laughed at all over the world. No matter where you go, they laugh at us. They can't even believe what's happening. And I'll tell you what, she's worse than he is. And they do lie. I was just saying to Rick, you know, the lies. They, t they say the exact, I'll have like 10 different things where I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. Everybody knows it. The media knows it. They do nothing to change it. And then they come out with a commercial saying exactly the opposite. I mean, things like, uh, I'm in favor of, or let's say they even say it differently, I'm against fracking. That's the first time I've ever heard it. Trump is against fracking. They do things that is just, and she's against fracking, but now she says she's for it. So I've had Hillary. I've had uh, Sleepy Joe. I've had a lot of people that I've run against now. And, you know, on a, on a different scale, I, I work with uh, senators and trying to get them elected. We're doing very well, the Republicans. I think we could end up, we could end up, I don't want to use numbers, but we could end up uh, surprisingly good, right, Rick? It could be a number that people would be shocked at if you would have said it even two months ago. And I'm helping all of them, every one of them. We had uh, some, some great results. We've had some results that are really surprising. But uh, this is the one, this, this woman is the worst, the lying. It's just unbelievable. Like the IVF, the fertilization. I came out totally in favor of it right from the beginning. She said, I'm against it. Carlos, she goes, he's totally against it. Uh, every single item that uh, having to do with energy, having to do with everything, and it just, and then she's got that, the worst governor in the country, probably the worst. I think she made a horrible mistake. We'll see what happens on November 5th, you know? Let's see what happens. But uh, there's something wrong with him, honestly. There's something wrong. And there's something wrong with her, too. She's slow, low IQ, something. I don't know what the hell it is, but they lie. I've never, we, we don't need another low IQ person. We had one for four years. We don't need another one. But, I mean, Crooked Hillary lied, but she didn't do it like this. I mean, she wouldn't take things that were so obvious and just say the opposite. They say the exact opposite. And as you know, uh, there are 15 different elements of policy that uh, she changed. She was in favor of uh, sex changes for prisoners at their will, paid for by the government. And now she says, no, I don't think that would be a good idea. She was uh, totally, I mean, when you talk about Fracking. She had no fracking under. I mean, we have 25 commercials. We put sometimes we put them on simultaneously. She's just, and now all of a sudden, uh, I love fracking. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Although today, though, it came out they had a bad thing come out today. One of her people said she's against, essentially against fracking, and uh, it's very interesting when that came out. Uh, it was sort of a big story. One of her top people said that because that's where they are, Rick. That's where they are. They're against fracking. They're never going to. And they're against uh, anything having to do with what's under the ground. And that's what, you know, Germany just went through it. They almost destroyed themselves. They went into a, uh, a situation where they were putting windmills all over the place and the wind wasn't blowing so much. And if they kept that process going, Germany would right now be bust. That's one, I guess, one of the primary reasons that Angela is not there anymore. They tried it. They, they had solar. They had solar fields that's so big. I mean, I saw a solar field come, and I'm, I'm in favor of solar, but it's not the same thing. It's got to fire up these massive plants. It's not going to, but I saw a solar field the other day that looked like it took up half the desert. I'd never saw anything like it. It's all steel and glass and wires and it looks like hell. And you see rabbits, they get caught in it. And every, you know, for the environmentalists, it's just terrible. I like, you know, some applications where you have it on a roof or you have it on something. But, but I'm looking at solar fields that are like miles and miles of just, and what it does to your desert areas or the areas that you're putting, it's just crazy. We have stuff right under the ground. Natural gas, we have, we have things that 
We had the cleanest air that we've ever had during my administration, and yet we also had more jobs, more productivity. We had the best numbers we've ever had. We had the lowest taxes we paid in our so, so we're in a, a race, and, and we're really — we're in a race with some very sick people. They're liars. They just lie. They lie about everything. And uh, I was going to hit her really hard on the trail today, but now I don't have to because uh, she's off. She's off. No, I can't get over it. Who the hell takes off? You have 14 days left. And she'll take a couple of more days off, too. You know why? She's lazy as hell, and she's got that reputation. She's a radical left lunatic. She's further left than Bernie Sanders or, or Pocahontas. Now, Pocahontas, <laughs> because I think, is Pocahontas, Rick, is Pocahontas further left than uh, Bernie? Just about, right? It's close. It's close. <laughs> Who the hell cares, right? Rick says, eh, I don't know. But uh, they're out there. But she's, she's the furthest left. We can't have a person. She's a Marxist. Her father's a Marxist professor. By the way, wow. the fake news, look at all of them. Where is the father we should interview? Because I'd find it interesting to see what he has to say. He's, uh, I don't know, I, they seem to have a problem. But it would be nice to interview the father. He's a Marxist professor. And I think that's okay. That's good, fine. But I think it's appropriate that the father be uh, interviewed by the fake news. They don't want to interview him, and I wonder why. Uh, if we had a real press in this country, this wouldn't even be a race. And I'm not sure it is a race anyway. Uh, they just came out with the, uh, the Atlanta Constitution, just came out with a poll that we're five up in Georgia. We're, <laughs> we're up in... And, and let's see what happens, because it all doesn't matter, because, you know, bad things happen. Some very, very bad things happened last time. And uh, — but this time, we don't have COVID. And uh, it's going to be a lot harder for them to do bad things. So we're going to see. We have tremendous people. We have tremendous — we have a lot of lawyers working. We have lawyers working, numbers of lawyers that nobody's ever seen before. Because we're not going to play games, because we're going to lose our country. Our country's failing. We don't know what we're doing. We're left at all over the world. President Xi thinks we're stupid. Putin thinks we're stupid. That would have never happened. Putin, if I were president, Putin would have never, ever gone into Ukraine. Now we have a, a number of dead people that's so much greater than what they say. They knocked down an apartment house that's two blocks long. They're big buildings in Ukraine, two blocks long and 20 stories high. And they say one person was slightly injured. Now, many people were killed when they did that. And these, these towns and cities all over Ukraine are knocked down. Millions of people. I mean, when you look at the total uh, number of dead from that war, and it would have never happened, should have never happened, there was zero chance. His energy policy also helped it happen because he drove energy through the roof because he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And if you look at now, uh, Israel, October 7th, that would have never happened. But if Bibi Netanyahu followed uh, the plan of Biden. He didn't want him to do anything. And a bad thing happened today. You probably heard. Now, the press isn't covering it very much, which is just incredible. Uh, possibly our Defense Department or somebody. Anyway, it was leaked. The entire military plan of Israel. The military plan. The plans they have at the highest level. It was leaked highly confidential information. It was leaked by our somebody. They have no idea who did it. Can you imagine you're, you're fighting a war and you have your Americans, uh, Carlos, can you imagine anything like that? Did you hear this? You know, they leaked all the information about the way that Israel's going to fight and how they're going to fight and where they're going to go. And somebody, who did that? Can you imagine somebody doing that? That's, that's the enemy. I guess that maybe is the enemy from within, as I talk about. We have an enemy from within. They hate to talk about it. But could you imagine? Could you imagine? So we just can't stand for this incompetence anymore. We are an incompetently run country. We are led by a man that, first of all, look, I'm not a fan of his. But what they did to him was incredible. He had 14 million votes. He won the primary fair and square. He had 14 million votes. And they came to him. They said he had a bad debate. He didn't do well. And his numbers went down. But 
but he, I think he would do, probably in the end, he might do better than her because she's more incompetent than he is. I think she's grossly incompetent. And I don't want to be nice about it because we can't take a chance. Nobody knows who she is. You say Harris. Her name is Harris. Who the hell is Harris? Nobody, even, even political people don't know. Rick Scott has no idea who the hell Harris is. No, people don't know who Harris is. But, uh, but now they're finding out that she's a radical left lunatic, and we can't take a chance on losing this election. Because if we lose this election, we may not have a country anymore. We may not, we never, and I've heard this from a lot of very smart people that are very straight down the middle. They say, we may never have an election again in this country. This is where we're going. I used to say that if we don't do something, we all know what's happened with Venezuela. This was 20 years ago, one of the great countries of the world. And now it's uh, troubled, to put it mildly. And I said it would be Venezuela on steroids, being a, meaning a bigger version. That can happen. Who would think it can happen? But I see it because I see the people that we deal with. And these people are, they don't love our country. They don't love our country. And we're going to do something about it, but we have to win the election. So, you know, when they get up and they lie about every single thing, they tell you they know your position. And in my case, it's been my position for many years. One of the people said uh, the other night on television, he's a great guy, Jesse, Jesse Waters. He said, whether you like Trump or not, his position has been the same for 30 years. I mean, it's been the same. I want strong borders. I don't want foreign countries to rip us off, Max. We're being ripped off by everybody, and our friends do it worse than our enemies. It's incredible. We, we had that very well going, and uh, we did a good job on that. But we're going to do the ultimate job. We're going to bring a lot of those jobs back. We're going to bring, I think we're going to bring more than we lost back. And it's going to happen very fast through intelligent taxation, tariffs, and incentives. And you're going to have companies pouring into our country, and they're going to be very happy. I think that's why I'm doing so well in Michigan. That's why the auto workers like Trump so much. You know, their union head is a stiff. He's a total stiff. He has no clue. He has no clue. He wants to go all electric. And uh, all electric cars, you know, they want to have all electric cars. Uh, and they're wonderful. You know, I think they're great. They have an application, but we want gasoline-propelled cars. We want hybrids. We don't want hydrogen, Max, because they blow up and you are no longer recognizable, Max. He, this guy owns more gas stations than any guy. He owns so many gas stations, he doesn't know what to do with them, right? But we're, and he's a great, he's a great American too, by the way. He's uh, started with nothing and he's a very successful man. He's a great man. So I just want to thank, to, so I just want to thank you all. We can't play games with these people. These are people that are dangerous people. And again, you know, uh, Hillary and Biden. Now, Biden didn't tell the truth very much, but he was much better than this one. This one is just an outright, I've never seen anything like it. Point after point after point, and then they do ads and they just say this stuff. And I just wonder, I hope the public is, is understanding it. I hope, because I found the public to be amazingly smart. They get it. I really, I found it to be amazing that they get it. But the level of lying is just incredible. I, I mean, to a point where I can't even imagine it's legal. I was asking some of these lawyers, some of the top guys, I said, can, can they absolutely, you know, two weeks before an election, go out and do an ad where every one of your policies are the exact opposite? Isn't that election interference and isn't that fraud? And isn't there a court that can do something about that? But the end result is, you know, we can talk about it here and people can listen and they understand it. I think they understand it. So maybe what we'll do is we'll go around, take a couple of questions yes. and uh, have a little fun, okay? It's an honor to be with everybody and especially this great Hispanic community. Okay, thank you very much. It was such an honor to work for you at the White House all four years, and I got a front row seat of how much you cared about the Latino community, and you delivered results, yeah. and you didn't pander to us. You gave us opportunity, and that's what we want. You know, my, we want the American dream. My mother was born in Mexico, my dad was born in Brooklyn with very humble means, and they worked very hard and achieved the American dream. So that's how a, when what other country could a little girl from East LA make it to the White House to work?
work for President Trump. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> and that dream is achievable through jobs. And we care, like all Americans, about the number one issue, and that's jobs and the economy. And we have some amazing uh, business owners here, sir, that want to tell you about how it was under your administration and what the trouble they're having. And so we have Joel Garza, who's here, who owns many Sonic franchises, among many other things. He's an entrepreneur. And so, Joel, why don't you tell uh, the president and everybody here about what you're experiencing? Uh, thank you, Mr. President, thank you. to have us here and taking the time uh, to be with us today. Uh, even the last three and a half years, the worst years for businesses. Inflation, interest rates with banks, uh, prices, everything, everything, you know, is nothing compared to 2017 to 20, right. when you were, you know, at the White House. And my biggest issue is going to be, it's easy to destroy what you build. But I don't think it's enough time for you and four years to rebuild again what these people destroy. I live in the city of Houston, and the last two years, 30% increase in property taxes. And we got a great governor, Governor Abbott, he's a great guy. That's true. Great guy, but uh, we need your help as soon as possible. We need you help us with banks to stop regulations. It, it's just so difficult right now to create more jobs. I think we're going to get it going very quickly, actually. I think it's uh, a lot of time, and we have some very good foundation. We have, as an example, uh, the tax bill that we passed. We gave you the biggest cut in taxes in the history of the country, We bigger than the Reagan cuts. And all of that stuff, it's going to be very hard for them to give it up. I can't imagine politically that it would be possible. It would be a disaster for the country if that, that could lead to a depression, frankly, if they gave that up. But uh, we have a great foundation to build on, and we're going to have things. So we're going to have a lot of companies coming in very fast. And I know your area does have some problems, incredibly. People don't talk about that, but they, they do. But most areas have problems because the, the policies of this administration, they don't even have a policy. They're, they're like, they don't have a policy. There's nothing. They, they don't have anything. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, think of it. They want to go to all electric cars, the whole thing electric. They, they need $9 trillion, I read the other day, to do a charging station, Max. He owns the gasoline stuff. And to do a charging station, and they built eight charging stations up in the Midwest someplace. They spent nine billion dollars. <laughs> I kid you not. One eight, you know what that is? A charging station is like a gas pump. It's the equivalent of a gas pump. They spent nine billion dollars for eight charging stations. So if you look at it that way, if you did the whole country, you would have spent 30 trillion dollars, okay? Which is more than the country, <laughs> which is every country in the world. It's so out of control, it's so horrible, and they don't want to change. The truckers came in to see me. The truckers are great. They have trucks that can go from New York to Los Angeles on a tank of diesel fuel. And they came in almost crying. They said, these people are crazy. They want us to go to electric trucks. And the problem is they don't go far. They'd have to stop six times. I mean, you talk about no deliveries. They have to stop six times. They're two and a half times heavier than gasoline or diesel. So the truck would weigh two and a half. I said, well, that could be a problem, right? Yes, you'd have to rebuild every bridge in the United States because they can't hear. What do you think of that, Carlos? So now if you're a child, you'd say, okay, that doesn't work. You know, those two things, right? It doesn't go far. And the other thing, third thing, is they'd have to use half of the capacity for the battery because the battery takes up tremendous amounts of room, uh, much more than a a load of uh, diesel fuel, which is, you know, something. And, and by the way, even little things, I'll give you little boring facts. As the truck goes, the fuel gets lighter, the battery stays the same weight. So it's massively heavy, and it takes up about 50% of the area that you're supposed to use to transport. The, so it doesn't work. So normally what you do is say, all right, after about, would you say three minutes, Carlos? Three minutes, you'd say, okay, let's get onto the neck. That doesn't work. They say, we don't care. 
we want you to do it. And these truckers are beside themselves. They're going to be forced to do electric trucks. They're not going to work. Maybe someday in the future. I don't know. Maybe someday. But it's possible it'll never work because it's so crazy. But think of it. Just the weight or the distance. They don't go far. The cost is astronomical. And these guys are going to be all put out of business. You're not going to have any truckers. And they say, we don't care. Build it. That's what we want. We want all electric trucks soon, like to give them such a short period of time. These are big. One, one gentleman had 29,000 trucks. And he said to me, you know, I've been buying trucks for 50 years. And every damn year, they got better and bigger and stronger and more efficient. Every single year. And then we build the cabs. We build apartments on the back of those trucks. And I'll tell you, sir, I know you like luxury. You'd be proud to live in one of those trucks. See, I don't know about that. I might be. Who knows? Who knows? But, and I think he meant it, actually. But he said, you'd be proud, you know, in the cab they built, like, the, the place for them to sleep and stay. He said, some of those things are so beautiful. But he said, every year, for 50 years, it got better. And if we had to go to electric, we would go back more than 50. We'd go back to 60 years. It would be worse than the truck from 50 years ago. It doesn't work. So what you say is it doesn't work. But they, they want to force it down your throat. Look at, look at the case of uh, Los Angeles and California. They have brownouts and blackouts all the time. And they want to go all electric. They don't have enough electric for themselves. They want to go all electric with one of the worst governors. And by the way, she as the Attorney General, helped destroy the state of California. And she destroyed, she destroyed probably, she destroyed probably, that's Harris. She destroyed probably the best, maybe the best city in the world. I mean, San Francisco was one of the greatest cities. A friend of mine, Bob Tisch, used to say that's the best city that he's ever been. He was in many cities, the great Bob Tisch. And he said, uh, San Francisco, was the best city in the United States. And now it's, it's horrible. You know, I own property there, and it's very costly every time I do this. But I don't care, because this is a much higher calling. Uh, I hurt the value of my property tremendously when I say this, but it's almost unlivable now with the crime and all of the things that are happening. And the only thing I, I would disagree with you on is that uh, the economy is very important. I actually think that the biggest thing is the border, because the border is destroying our country. It's very destroying. I think the economy is bad, but I think the and, and it's made really bad by the horrible inflation that was caused. The, the inflation is really the, the biggest problem. But I really believe that even the inflation, and that's a country destroyer, it's a country buster, they call it, inflation. But I really think that the biggest problem this country has is what they've allowed to happen to us on the border. Right. They've allowed our country to be destroyed. They're allowing thousands of murderers and drug dealers and, and terrorists and people from mental institutions. They're emptying out their jails into our country. They're emptying out their jails. And by the way, their crime rates all over the world are going down. They have many people now coming from the Congo in Africa. It's not just you think about South America, they're emptying out their jails in the Congo, and they're delivering them to the border, and they're saying, congratulations, here's America. And we have, we have 21 million people at least over the last little while. And if they got in, they're going to have open borders 100%, just like they tried to trick everybody. They said they tried to tighten it up a little bit just to make it because they have an election coming up. It didn't work much. But they forgot to tell you that they continue to fly big, beautiful Boeing jets over the, right over the border with hundreds of thousands of illegal migrants landing in, in the Midwest and other places. They forgot to stop those planes coming in. They thought they were going to put a little bit of a show on in the border and they could show something. They didn't do it. I think it's the single biggest problem because our country is loaded up right now with murderers, and with people, and seriously ill people from mental institutions. And those mental institutions are empty. And those jails are becoming empty. And countries are down 60, 70, and 80% in crime. 
and we're going through the roof with crime. When she said, no, the migrants don't commit crime. These migrants are, the, these, the criminals that they're allowing in are tougher than any criminal there is. The only good thing about it is they make our criminals look like nice people. These are ruthless, horrible people. I'd like to ask Max to say a few words because he gets it from the standpoint of where he was born. He grew up in a system, and I've seen him speak very beautifully on this subject of what's happening to our country. Max? Well, thank you, Mr. President, for being here. Last time you asked me to talk, I took everybody else's time and you told me to shut up, so I'm gonna make it very brief. Yeah. Okay, I just wanna start by saying, drill, baby, drill, mm -hmm. because that is your motto. Yeah. I am extremely confident, without a doubt, that the first day that we elect Mr. Donald J. Trump, our next president, the first day in office, I guarantee you he'll solve half of the problems that we have. The most True. important, True. most important, True. on November 5th, the election is not about you and us, it's about freedom and oppression, and this is the only man that I know that can handle that. This is the only man that has survived, for the grace of God, things that we can never imagine. And he gets up and he says, fight, fight, fight. I happen to be honored today. I'm honored today by being surrounded by representatives of God on earth, and we have to pray. Yes. And I always would say, pray, 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 but <laughs> fight, 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 because that's exactly what we need to do. Praying itself is not going to do it. We need to pray and fight. Now, talking about the economy, this is very simple. You made us energy independent. In just a flick of a finger That's right. you can do it again now here's the problem we have people running our country who are totally economic illiterate these people have never had a job these people have never run a business these people have never signed the front of a check mr. Donald Trump has done all of that and he runs the, con the country like a business because after all it's a business you cannot keep printing money that you don't have to help people who hate you instead of taking care of your own neighbors here in America that's why he will make America great again and when he makes America great again he will make the whole world great again because we need to be strong enough to take care of our problem and then we can go and help the people who need help so thank you, Mr. President. Talking about the American dream, a young boy came to this country at age 13, didn't even know the language, and one day he's sitting in a panel, hugging the best man, the President of the United States of America. Thank you very much from the thank bottom of my much. heart. Thank you. thank you very much. Mr. President, Mr. President, um, and it's a misnomer that Latinos want open borders. We want a secure border like all Americans. And, and we know what it leads to. Eduardo, who is the producer of Sound of Freedom, um, he has so much ex first-hand experience. So Eduardo, why don't you tell us about uh, the movie and what we're facing with the immigration that the President's talking about. Well, first of all, uh, thank you so much, President, for your time. Uh, my name is Eduardo Verastegui. And I am very grateful to this nation for opening the door to my dreams. This nation has been such an amazing blessing in my life. God bless America. God bless Mexico and God bless Hispanic America. And let's make America and Mexico and Hispanic America great again. Together, pro-life again, healthy again, and free again. I met these heroes 10 years ago in Los Angeles, California, ex-Navy SEALs, ex-CIA agents, and they traveled around the world undercover rescuing children. And when they told me in details what they do, 
in how they rescued these children, my eyes were open. And I said, I'm a filmmaker, I want to I wanna make a movie about this, because the first step to eradicate child trafficking is to raise awareness. Because if you don't know that this problem exists, how you can fix it? So I made a promise to God that I will dedicate my entire life to end child trafficking. Yeah. To end child trafficking. Because God's children are not for sale. Children are sacred. And I am very grateful with you, Mr. President, dear amigo, dear hermano, because of you hosting a private screening in your house, because of you endorsing Sound of Freedom. After that, Sound of Freedom became the number one independent film in box office ever in history produced by a Mexican producer. Thank you for that. Thank you for the incredible hard work you're doing. Thank you for putting the children first. And that's why it's so important is for all the media, for all Mexican-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, to vote for President Trump. And I know we will win for the third time. For the third time. Yes. Yes. We will win for the third time. And that's a fact. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. Because it's true. Because it's true. Look what is happening right now. Look, look what is happening right now with these evil people. Obama, Hillary, Kamala, uh, Kemala, uh, uh, Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, all this team. There's more than 300,000 children, over 300,000 children that they came through the border, they released them, and we don't know where they are. Kamala, where are the children? Kamala, where are the children? You know, these people, Kamala and Biden, they're, they're the biggest human traffickers in the history. And everyone knows that. And that's why I'm here to give my 100% to support my dear friend, President Donald Trump. And again, we will win for the third time. God bless you. God bless you, Mr. President. Really nice. Thank you. We need to put you in the White House back again, in the beautiful White House. You're going to be in the beautiful White House again. You bring up something that people don't talk about, the press doesn't talk about. I think if it were on the other side, it would be one of the great scandals in history. It's actually 325,000 children are missing. Wow. Sex slaves, slaves, or dead. Yes. One of those four things. Slaves, sex slaves, missing or dead. And three, think of what 325,000, you know, we say it, it's a number, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I was talking to a reporter before, I said, 325,000. Oh, what else is new? He's going like, let's go to the next question. I'm saying to myself, can you believe it? A bad, a bad sort of a reporter, I told him he is. But think of it almost like, you know, like, let's get on with the interview. Think of what 325,000, we have religious leaders up here. Think of what 325,000, how many times can you fill a nice big stadium like a Yankee stadium with, with that 325,000? They're missing. I think many of them are dead. Most of them possibly are dead. Uh, it's, it's so sad. Our country is so sad. And then you wake up to the news that we've given the entire Israeli uh, game plan to the enemy. Who could imagine this? Who could imagine this? Um, I would say Israel's not too happy about that, right? But with all of this together, add it up. And I'm just so glad I bring it up. And it doesn't register. Maybe it registered better the way you said it, because, you know, you, you're such passion the way you said that. We are missing, during their regime, this stupid person, this stupid person that was the border, border czar. She was made the border czar. Now she said she wasn't. She was the border czar for three and a half years, and now she said no. Whether she is or not, she was in charge of the border. That's loud and clear. She never once called the Border Patrol. The Border Patrol, by the way, five days ago, endorsed me, which is something they're not even really supposed to do. 
And in endorsing me, they gave it a full-throated endorsement. But uh, in endorsing me, they, they said how horrible she is. And it's not easy for them to say that. You know, this is the vice president of the country. They work for the country. They said the worst that they've ever seen and you know, they're great people. They're uh, people that want to do their job. It's easier not to do the job, probably. Just let the people walk right into our country. They want to do the job. They love the country. They're incredible people. I've gotten to know them very well. And they said not one time. The question was asked by the fake news. How many times did she call? Not one call was ever made to any of them by either Biden or Kamala. Not one call about the border. And I actually think it's the biggest thing. You know, we talk about the economy and we talk about inflation. Let's put them together, put them together. But there's something about that border that's just really, really evil. The drugs, the human trafficking, you know, it's not just people pouring. It's the human trafficking and they traffic in women mostly. It's mostly women, believe it or not, as much as we talk about the 325,000. But women still have the big edge. Uh, they traffic in women and children, and they do it at levels that, by the way, four years ago, it, it's always bad. If you do one person, it's bad. But this is 15 or 16 times the number. Nobody checks. Nobody does anything. You know how you check? You go and open the trunk of a car. That's how they, they put them mostly in trunks of cars. How would you like to be a woman, a little girl, a little boy? In the trunk of a car, that's how they find them. A lot of times they're dead because of the heat. They drive through. By the time they get to the destination, they open the trunk and they're dead. And this horrible, incompetent person has allowed this to happen and never one time called anybody from the Border Patrol. They work for her and they work for him. And then they complain about a bill. It's a phony deal. It's a scam. There's no bill. I never had a bill. All you have to do as president, wake him up and say, Joe, we need you to say, close the border. That's what I did. I, That's right. I just said, we're closing the border. He keeps talking about, they keep bringing up a phony bill. The bill, the bill was horrible. Two million people are allowed in. It was a horrible bill, stupid bill, but has nothing to do. As president, you have tremendous, you, it's called extreme power. You have extreme power. You can just with, by the fact you say, close the border and the border is closed that's it very very simple you don't need all of this nonsense that they talk about but the truth is for some reason and i can't figure it out for some reason they want open borders nobody's been able to tell me why they i don't think they can tell you why they just want open borders so we have to win the uh, election i'm so glad you brought up you said 300 but it's the number's actually 325 i'll give you a number that's really bad too so the Border Patrol, because they've had it, they've never done this before, they released a list of criminals in our country. And they really are tremendously good if you let them do the job like I let them do the job. Uh, we have 13,099, exactly, 13, during their, during their term, they tried to say, oh, this is over 40 years now. This is during their three and a half year that they've been there. 13,099 murderers, these are murderers. These are people that were in prison and they're murderers. Some are up for the death penalty, but some killed far more than one person. 13,099, it's the exact number. Every one of them has been released into the United States of America. Then you have the drug lords and the drug dealers. There are thousands of them. Then you have the uh, traffickers, the human traffickers. These are people that largely were in jail, caught. Then you have the gang members. These are people that weren't in jail, but they ruled the cities. They ruled the cities, the gangs, they ruled them. You don't have them, Christian Durrell, for the most part. If you did, you'd do something about it very quickly. We're lucky. But these are gang members that are so violent. And you see it's happening in Aurora, in Colorado, where you have a governor who's a radical left governor who's petrified of the whole situation. And they have military-style weapons. They have weapons that are of military quality. Somebody said it might be a step up. It's called a Supreme, a military Supreme. It's, they have weapons and they're taking over apartment complexes and everything. These gangs come from Venezuela largely. Um, what's happening to our country is so, it's so crazy. Nobody would think it. I mean, you sit here and you're just amazed. As you speak, you get angry and angry because it's, 
It's so simple and it's so obvious and everyone knows it's true and nobody does anything about it. All they think about is transgender operations. All they think about is we want men, we want men to play in women's sports. You know, I've never met a person, because I'm a sports guy, I've never met a person that came up to me and they say, we want men to play in women's sports. I, somehow they're pushing it. Has anyone here ever met? I've been doing this a long time and I've been talking about this for a while because I'm ending it on day one. I'm ending it on day one. And we, we, despite a whole web of things, we didn't, we wouldn't accept it. But we're, we're going to just end it. But has anyone ever had anyone? I mean, you have all these great politicians up here. Carlos, has anyone come up to you and say, we insist on having men play in women's sports? I saw a volleyball match this weekend where a man who transitioned, this is the way I'm very politically correct now because, you know, you lose your whole, you lose in politics if you say slightly off, a man who transitioned into, congratulations, a woman, hit a ball. He was like four feet up in the air. He smashed a ball so hard that these young ladies that were all top players, they said, we've never seen anything that hit, hit her on the head. And, uh, you know, people have been very badly hurt in that sport and in other sports. Swimming, the records, it's ridiculous. The records are being broken by numbers that nobody's even thought possible. The greatest is weightlifting. You see weightlifting records. Take a look at some of these records where a record that stood for 18 years and they put an eighth of an ounce and an eighth of an ounce and it said, and you know, these guys are walking in and breaking it. It's so sick that you actually say they hate our country. But think, has anybody, has anybody approached you and say, we want to really fight hard so that men can play in women's sports? I don't think so. So uh, there's a sickness going on in our country. We have to end the sickness. And we have to start because she's, she's a radical left. You know, she was in. She was one of the leaders, the one I'm running against. They all, you're all running against somebody, but the one I'm running against, she was in favor of defund the police. She was one of the starters of defund. Now, once you have that ideology, even for a week or a day, you shouldn't be president. Because if you want defund the police, even for a day, you shouldn't be president. And she was one of the leaders. So, um, Mr. President. So I just, I just want to leave it at that. Uh, would anybody else like to say anything? Bob, would you like to say something? Sure, Mr. President. Go ahead. Give the Latino a microphone. And we'll, we'll That's all right, <laughs> in your case. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I can't believe your courage, your fight, and I know why you're doing this. You're not doing it for anything but because you love this country, you love us, and we love you. And there's a big day coming up, November 5th. Uh, it's existential for this country. Yeah. And there's a day about 30 days later, 20 and some days later, which is Thanksgiving. And I'm looking for the day where we can sit around the table and thank God that President Trump is the 47th President of the United States. He's going to bring this country back. <laughs> You know, I, I, I was, uh, there's a, a famous Cuban uh, poet, Jose Marti, and he said, there are those who are born to love and build and others to hate and destroy. You're a builder, you're a uniter, you're a courageous, you love, and you create. Uh, years ago, uh, Elian Gonzalez, his mother, Elizabeth, brought him to these shores at six years old. And, you know, for opportunity, for the land of opportunity, we've become the land of exploitation. Uh, they took him out, the family had uh, fought to keep him in this country under pressure from Castro. They took him out, our, our DOJ took him out, Janet Reno. You know, Mr. President, DOJ has not gotten much better since then. Uh, even under some Republican uh, uh, presidents. But, you know, the three-letter, to me, the three-letter agencies is the fourth branch of government. This warfare that's gone against you, and they're taking, it's one of the ones that are taking this country away. 
But we had a day of protest. I was here, I was living in Florida at that time when Eliad was taken. And they expected that Miami would burn, like other protests around the country by other groups. But nothing happened, and why is that? Because the Cuban community, the Colombian community, the Venezuelan community have built Miami, and they built this country with the working place. And when you build, when you build, you don't destroy. The other side of, you know, loving and building and creating is hating and destroying and dividing. And that's what's happened. We've also we have become from the land of opportunity to the land of exploitation. And the exploiter in, tr in, uh, in chief is Kamala Harris and this administration. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I don't say that to be, I say that as a Latino who's fed up, basta ya con el abuso, where enough abuse and enough exploitation. To, to talk about, because I was involved with Eduardo on The Sound of Freedom as an executive producer, and we stole it out of uh, Disney, who had no faith in it. They were going to, in Gavitarlo, they are going to put it away. But uh, Angels lifted it up, and it became an incredible thing. And it lit a fire in me and our company to, to the awareness of child trafficking. Now, last year, and I know this because we, we were involved in, in, in anti-trafficking, on April 26, 2023, Tara Lee Rodas testified before Congress that the U.S. is the middleman in this trafficking. And I've been to Central America. Our kids, kids are being bought for pennies on the dollar, and they're sold. We know where they are. You know, none of these sponsors that they're handed off to have been vetted. They know that they're being sold into slavery, into sex, in, into body parts, etc. And so we are the middleman. We're profiting off of this. And, you know, Mr. President, when you become president, we need to follow this money because it's, it's dark money. You know, we're exploiting our children. But something happened after Tara Lee wrote us, this, just last year, testified there were 85,000 children missing. And Javier Becerra, who's head of HHS, and Alejandro Mayorkas, uh, he went to his group and said, people, we got, Henry Ford would be embarrassed by the lack of efficiency of bringing people in as commodities to be sold. We need to be more efficient. And guess what happened? The, the, the Inspector General of DHS, Department of Homeland Security under Mayorkas, uh, they did this investigation that this year, what, less than a year later, were 325,000 children missing. And like the president said, also millions of people uh, trafficked and exploited. 70% are women, 25% are children. But we were so good. That's the only thing we've been good at. To tell you, this administration, the only thing they've been good at is growing the biggest industry in the world, which is human trafficking yeah. and, and drugs. That's the only thing that, and, and for exploitation, for power, for money. You know, if you go to watch Aladdin, it's a pretty cool uh, theater on, uh, play on, on and, uh, Broadway. The genie says to Aladdin, never drink from the cup of money or power, never be satisfied. But this is, you know, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris was, was charged with looking for the root cause of, of trafficking and the, the border problem. The root cause, you know how she could find it? Look in the mirror. I mean, if O.J. Simpson was alive, he'd still be looking for the killer of his wife. But, you know, this is the root cause. The root cause is greed and power. And we have a president who loves us, cares for us. So to me, that gives me great hope for the future of this country, that we have a president. A courageous president who has God's hand on him, who turned his head at 6-11 in the afternoon on July 13th. God's hand is on this man because he's chosen to bring us back to greatness. Thank you, God.
Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. President, um, the other the other issue of for Latinos is our faith, and you are the champion of people of faith. And so we would like to end this, if you would allow us, with praying over you, if you would allow us. And I, I would like for Apostle Maldonado and for uh, Pastor Ramiro, if you could start, and then Apostle, if you could finish, and we will pray. Can um, yes, do you mind, sir? No, okay. Got it all. Got it all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before you and we believe, Lord, that you are the answer for all the problems that we're facing. That we can put our hope in you through Jesus and have hope again. Our faith can be built up again. That you can return to us the joy that is only from you. However, today, Lord, we lift up the man that we believe you've put your hand upon to help restore America and bring America back to the place that honors you. To a place where we will not be kicked out for saying Christ the King or Jesus is Lord. Lord, we want all faiths to be respected. All faiths. And we thank you that this is a man that does, in fact, respect all people of faith so we ask lord you would strengthen him that you'd send your holy and warrior angels around him like we've seen evidenced already but you'd continue lord because we know that the blood of jesus draws us near you so we ask for that covering over him that he would continue to hear your voice that you would continue to order his steps and that he would help us to make America godly again. Amen. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Apostle? Let Apostle get As I was talking yesterday to the, uh, in North Carolina, I mentioned to people the fact that this is not a war between the left and the right. This is a war between good and evil. So we can't combat that. We can't fight that in the natural. We need spiritual weapons to fight it. So prayer is one of them. And I believe uh, President Trump is here because there's a purpose, there's a higher assignment for him to finish with this nation. So we're going to pray prayer. The Bible says that let's pray for the will of God to come. Meaning, what's the will of God? The Bible says God sets up kings. He removes kings. We're going to pray for the will of God for him to be the next 47 president. Do you believe that? We're gonna, I want you to stretch your hands toward him. In the Old Testament, the prophets anointed the kings to become kings. So today we're going to do what the Bible says. We're going to bring the will of God and we're going to pray for the president, for President Trump to be the next president. So I want you to stretch your hand and I want you to pray whatever you want to pray out loud. But let's pray with all the heart. Father, we thank you. We come to you and we lift up President Trump. Father, you protected him. You guarded him with a purpose for this time of such a time as this. And we pray today, Father, as an apostle in this country, as, as a man of God in this country, I pray for the kingdom of God to come, for the will of God to come, and for you to establish your will upon his life. And Father, we anointed him today. We anointed him to be the next 47th president of the United States, to restore the biblical values. Father, and I thank you today. You protected him. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. 
and he will go to the White House, Father, to represent you and to do your will in your assignment. I pray today that you will be done and we'll be celebrating that you have put him as the next president. We give you the praise for your protection and we pray for his family. We pray for every member of his family. You protected him, God, and to you be the glory. And today we can declare freely, Father, freely, Jesus is Lord over his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Mr. President. I hope you can feel the Latino love. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.